as the sign behind me says, oh, car coming, of course. Okay, well, that's an outtake. Figures you're in a ghost town and it's got to be like, uh, you know, the busiest corner in the entire place. Anyway, let's try that again. Okay, round two. As the sign behind me says, welcome to all set. And can you believe this? Here comes another vehicle. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. I probably just have seen every resident of the town drive by this intersection. All right, take number three. As the sign behind me says, welcome to Alsask. And that's the old Alsask school boarded up there just over my shoulder. But we're not really here to check that out. We're on our way to check out the Radar Dome, which is a Cold War relic that dates back to the 1960s. While the name Alsask is a portmanteau of Alberta and Saskatchewan, the town site itself is entirely within the province of Saskatchewan, albeit by a few hundred meters. Alsask was incorporated as a village in 1910 and as a town in 1912. By 1916, the population was around 300 people. Alsask reverted into village status in 1947. The Royal Canadian Air Force opened a base here in 1959, and by the early 70s, the population was over 800 people. The old Alsask school. Probably the most impressive building left in the town itself. Not in great shape, unfortunately, but I'd love to see inside of it. So, as usual with our videos recorded out here on the prairies, wind will be a factor on the outside. But uh, here's a good look, first look at the radar dome. We are right on the border between Alberta and Saskatchewan here. This is the fourth meridian, which forms the border between the two provinces. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting. The tour starts at noon. It's about 1130 now. We're early and we're just waiting for the uh, guard slash guide to come by and open the gates and let us in. Now we'll obviously go into more detail once we get inside and get more first-hand information, but from doing some online digging, it sounds like it was uh, in operation up until about 1986, 1987, at which time basically the entire pine tree line of warning systems was decommissioned. Uh, the dome was pretty much left abandoned for... Uh, for you know the better part of three decades and uh, if you want check out the uh, link to the big door article on this where they actually got inside prior to it being uh, cleaned up and open to the public if you've ever driven the main highway between Calgary and Saskatoon, you've undoubtedly seen this giant golf ball just to the north side of the highway. This radar station operated on the site between 1961 and 1987. It was part of the Pine Tree Line, which was a network of military radars for monitoring Soviet activity in North American airspace, a project which started back in 1951 at the height of the Cold War. Okay, let's get out of this wind and get inside and take a look at this dome from a perspective not many people have had the chance to see yet. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're going to try again. <laughs> well, that was quite a diversion to start. The list goes on and on and on of all this. And now, now we can get on to the bigger things. And so this is the first time that we actually have uh, some artifacts uh, presented to you and different things uh, that has never been in here before. So what I'm going to start to do is explain about what this level is. So this is where all the electronics 
uh, for help. Uh, it used to get so hot in here because everything was by tubes. This poster here uh, was done by Gary Collins, who works here. Uh, and so this is the old tower uh, that would be over that week uh, that you would have seen coming into the kitchen sink. Uh, this is the stage building. This is the mechanical building here. The search tower. This is the breezeway that I was talking about that connects into the staircase that we just came up. And then this is the other height fire and the guardhouse. And it's over here with the other one. And this is how they used to focus uh, the microwave signals in the, in the environment for the antenna. As you say, I'm too slow. <laughs> <laughs> so the radar system is what made everything else in the Cold War work. Without the radar system, nothing had any did it in our yeah, you know. Jets coming and bombers and missiles, right? Who's in here? Now, all the mechanics of the did in here uh, is quite amazing. Like, this has been exposed to water, it's been exposed to manure, uh, and all that kind of stuff. I never maintained, but yet it's still moves through. Wow. <laughs> so, mechanically, it's Phenomenal. <laughs> so, and that's that. Now, one of the things I didn't explain about is that quite often they used to build buildings within the building because it was mechanically loud in here. Uh, it was hot, and so, uh, so for example, downstairs, uh, the first level that we were just at, by that window, that used to be a coffee room in here, approximately ten feet by ten feet, and. Uh, you know, they used to place darts in there and all that kind of stuff. It's only the one railing on the right hand side, so make sure you have your hands on at all times. You know, this, uh, like, I, I had an incident and I don't want to have another incident, so just be please very careful. So when you get up to this, up, up onto the platform up there, it's very uh, short ceiling height, so watch for your head so you don't hit anything. Yeah, go ahead.
Hello. Okay, well, the plans of getting any sort of aerial footage of the radar dome failed miserably. Uh, Drone Ocan seems to be suffering from some problems here and is uh, throwing gimbal overload errors at me, and the gimbal's not calibrating properly, so can't put it up in the air. So, well, that was a good idea, but it just didn't pan out. This was a real treat to be able to finally come inside. It's usually not open for tours. They just acquired it two years ago. So after years of driving by it here as we go back and forth to Saskatoon to see my folks, it's really cool to be able to see inside it. It's a really fascinating piece of history. Just the paranoia that ran rampant during the Cold War and the lengths that they went to to, um, to protect the country basically is fascinating. So thank you Fred for the awesome tour and the Civil Defense Museum for doing all the work to preserve this history.